everyone, Mind of Matter here, checking out my car. Uh, I was talking to a guy named Mr. V on YouTube in the comment section who had some questions about my battery degradation. Uh, as you can see, the range on my car right now is 234 miles. If I click the button here, I get 77%. I think that equates to around 302, 303 miles, something like that. And uh, I was really pleased to see that when I bought the car, of course. Uh, before I bought it, I did this same simple math here and divided uh, 235 by 0.77% uh, battery and got about, yeah, 304 miles when I bought it and 302, 303 now, so pretty much the same. I was really happy to see that. Uh, I've got no reason to think it's not the original battery. The car has 142,000 miles on it. Maybe it was replaced at some point. There's a, you know, a chance of that. I have no idea, but... I've got no reason to think it has been replaced, um, but then again, this degradation is really good. So um, credit to whoever took care of the car beforehand or credit to the BMS system that Tesla put in here. But keep in mind also that this might not be the absolute best way to track battery degradation. If you go into service mode in these cars now, you can do a battery degradation test, which I plan on doing at some point. Uh, and also note that you can also just drive the car from 100% to 0%, hopefully ending up near a battery charger, and seeing how many miles you get out of it. Uh, you should do that when it's relatively warm out, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, avoid a lot of aero drag on the car and friction and starting and stopping. Just a steady, you know, 45 miles an hour would be ideal in about 75 degree weather conditions. Um, that's probably difficult to find, but if you can do it, that's probably the best way to test your battery degradation. I'll plan on doing that when it's a little warmer out here. You can see here we are in Chicago. It's 28 degrees today Fahrenheit, so don't want to do that today. But anyways, I was pleased with the battery degradation on this car and hope this video is helpful. All right, for the first time, we're going to plug in the 240 volt charger to my new outlet. Wish us luck. And... Looks so good so far. Oh, it's working. Let's see what speeds we get. Oh, hey, we're already four times what we normally are. Normally we're on one kilowatt. Five kilowatts now. Six kilowatts. <gasps> this is great. Oh. At home charging, got 233 volts. I better go check and make sure I'm not pulling too many amps. Uh, 40 amps is good. I don't know how it knew that, but maybe that's the max for the Tesla charger. Or maybe that's just um, what the cable pulls, so. Here's the setup here. As you can see, my uh, 1450 plug connected to my Tesla, I think this is a Gen 2 charger. It doesn't have the disconnected um, adapter ability, but I bought it just for this plug and just for this garage. Here's the box right here. I don't know anything about it. The electrician did it all. And the conduit goes out the floor all the way to the house in a trench to about right there. So nothing too crazy. This other cable, in case you're wondering, this is going to be a LAN network cable, so I can put another router here in the garage so I can work out here, or I can have my Tesla update over the air updates more easily with a better signal. And that string there is just to be able to feed my LAN cable through to the house. So, so far I'm really happy with my investment. For those that don't know, I did get two quotes in the past just for this 240 volt 50, uh, 50 amp outlet. Uh, both quotes from my local area were $3,500 each. They were within like $20 of each other, which I find a little suspect, but whatever. So I decided, no thanks, not worth $3,500. I'm doing just fine on 110 charging. But um, when my wife decided we were gonna do the kitchen, I thought, well, let's, do the um, electrical for the garage at the same time. We were upgrading to an induction stove. And so that requires 240 volt anyway. So I thought just ask the same electrician to upgrade the 
stove and the charger at the same time. And so that's what I did. And uh, that was about, that added about $1,750 to the you know, total price, which I still think was a little high, but you know, we have a detached garage, as you can see, they had the trench, they had to run a long cable out from the house. And so maybe that's par for the course. I don't really know, but be that as it may, I am happy with the result and I'll upgrade um, maybe another time you know, to a second outlet in case my wife ever gets an EV. But honestly, this Tesla Model 3 is so efficient. I didn't even need to do this. I was totally fine with 110. But since we were doing the electrical work anyway, I thought maybe I'll upgrade the 240 at the same time so that when I get a Lightning or a Silverado EV or something less efficient than this Tesla, I'll have it already. And I would have paid what I think is a cheaper price having done it as part of a bigger job than doing it standalone. So let's check out how the charging speed's going. All right, I charged for about an hour and a half and got about 16%. Uh, and that's, as I said earlier, about nine times faster than when I got on the 110 volt outlet. So really happy with the results and stay tuned for more updates on the Tesla. And keep in mind, I'm gonna be going to the Chicago Auto Show here in a couple weeks. So stay tuned if you wanna see updates for the Chicago Auto Show. Thanks, bye.